Hi, I'm Lance Culver, and this is going to be a 3D Studio Max and Tie Flow tutorial. We're going to be recreating one of the Tie Flow example files, simply titled Worms. We will explain it, and then we will make it a little bit better than what it was, and hopefully, we'll be creating something like this. Okay, we have your basic scene set up here with a couple lights, a camera, a plane for the ground, and I'm using a text primitive as my 3D object, but you could use any object here. And I'm using V-Ray Material Library for the textures. Okay, so this is a super easy setup. Let's go ahead and just shut all this off right here. We have Typho on another layer. We will go up to Create, go to Extended Primitives, Capsule. Here, make it about 1.5 centimeter, maybe 35 centimeters long. Okay, rotate it down 90 degrees. Increase the sides maybe to 20. Select the end vertex. Use soft selection. We're going to adjust the fall off until it goes about halfway through. Scale it down on the Z and Y axis. Okay, then maybe a little on X. I just want to taper the ends off. They don't have to be exactly the same. Click on the Create tab, Systems button, Bones button. Okay, start in the center, create the bones and go out to one side. You can leave a little nub on there if you want, and then go back and do the same thing. Other side. Go ahead and center the object up with the bones as best you can. And click on Modify, add a skin modifier, edit envelopes, add the bones. Your results should be very similar. Okay, go ahead and pose the worm. Let's give it a quick little animation here. I'm using a V-Ray Fast SSS subsurface scatter as a material type, but you can use anything. And I'm using a texture for a displacement map. So go ahead and click back on the Create tab and go over to the Helper icon button there and create a tie actor. Put it right there in the center. Use the Pick button to select your model. Okay, go down to Animation, click Add. Change this default to Wiggle underscore one. And input the number of frames that you made the animation. You can create a tie icon. Make it about the size of your whatever your 3D object is and position it above it. OK, 
Okay, go to the Create tab, Standard Primitives, Create a Type Low Object. And go ahead and drag out a birth operator. Let's go ahead and set a low number, let's say 10 for the initial spawn. Set it to a, down to a length of 30 frames. Drop in a position icon operator. Select pick and then click on your tie icon. Okay, drag out an actor, drop it on. Select your actor icon. Activate the scale, increase the variation to about 45%. Drag out a rotation. Particle physics operator. Change the timing to on event entry. Change this radius. Disable integrate into bind solver and change the effect to position. We drag out actor animation. Change this default to wiggle underscore one. Change match strength to 0.75. You change the uh, animation playback speed variation. I drag out a physics shape and then connect it to the actor. Now as you can see here, our bones are separating because there's nothing holding them together so it's deforming our mesh. So we'll drag out this X bind and that fixes that. Change the bind type to joint. Reduce the binding distance and the, and the number of binds allowed. Let's change that down to two. Change uh, the spring on the twist down to 175. The damping down to, let's say, 25. Maybe increase that say 50 and then lower the spring back to let's say to 150. For swing let's uh, change this like reduce the spring to 30 and the damping to somewhere let's say 10. Okay drag out a physics collision. Pick your text object or your 3D object. Now the way this sets up initially, you can see that it's kind of treating it like it's landing on a box. So let's change this whole type to mesh. Now go ahead and reduce the down to 20 under swing settings. Let's increase the particle count.
So you can reduce the ground collider height just a little bit so that it'll you know, cause the worms to sit a little bit more if they seem to be hovering some. All right, go ahead and copy the event and create a new one that's identical. In this new event, let's change the particle birth to start at 195 and end at 235. I use a total of 250 particles, but you can change this number to anything you want. And for the first event, the particle birth should be start at frame zero, end at frame 180 with a particle count of three. There was a little bit of jitter in the render for this, and it's okay for this tutorial, but to get rid of it, there's a few things you can do. You can increase the time step so let's say a half or quarter frame or even more. Just take longer to simulate. Uh, you can also increase the simulation sub-steps and iterations, and this will likely resolve the problem. That will improve the quality of the simulation, but will be at a cost of performance. If there's any part of this process that you're having trouble with, and you need some help, just feel free to drop a comment below and I will do my best to see what I can do to help you out. I appreciate you watching the video. Thank you.